says we're live. Got my organic cold press peppermint oil to wake me up. Let's see here. And yeah, we have a little uh, little time here, so I'm gonna do a little FAQ session and any questions. If you guys have any uh, anything that you want to uh, touch on, I haven't done one of these in a while. I'm excited, but we did get a few questions in, and I'm gonna have. Uh, my uh, lovely new employee, Nikwa here, read them to me and go from there. I haven't, ta haven't taken a look, so we'll, uh, we'll see. By the way, just for the record, I had to bring this over here. If, if you guys like cooking, uh, I, I just cooked up a ribeye with this right here. Uh, this is not an affiliate thing. I don't work with them. I just bought this from Whole Foods. It's fourth, fourth and Heart. The truffle, white truffle salt, ghee, butter, He's uh, clarified butter. This is grass fed with white truffle oil, sea salt, and uh, obviously the grass fed ghee. It's, we, I use that to cook a ribeye right now, and it was unbelievable. Hey, Santana, hey, I miss you guys too. I'll be back out there uh, probably in uh, June, May, May or June. So, yeah, I'll be, I'll be back. Yeah, I don't even know. Are you still in New York? If so, I'll definitely be there. Um, but yeah, it's good to, nice to hear from you. But yeah, so if you want to fire away any of the questions, I'm excited. Let's go. What does your skincare routine include? So what do you do daily, weekly, monthly? Um, <clears throat> daily. So I start off, uh, she's asking, if you didn't hear that, uh, what my daily skincare routine would be. And I stay, I stay extremely consistent with using the mask and I do the derma roller twice a week. So I'll pick a couple days if I don't have anything to prepare for. It's usually Sunday and Wednesday, but things are starting to pick up. So I'll, if I have to do something, I have to be face-to-face -face, or if it's video work, I'll do a dermal roller application before to open up my pores in the dermal layer of the skin. So it escorts the micronutrients of, uh, the, in the superfood ingredients in the clays, just past that initial layer. So you're increasing absorption and maximizing the potential of all the ingredients that you use, which in my case are, you know, the mask with the four different clays, pearl powder, colostrum, vitamin C, organic kelp powder, and the American ginseng just gets past that initial layer. So you're optimizing absorption, they say by 96%. So I can't say enough about that derma roller. Have you used one? Have you yeah. used one of ours? Yeah? Yeah. You like it? The one roller. Yeah? Uh, yeah. One? Yeah. Oh, you started off yeah. with the one? Yeah, That's I've awesome. used one before though. Oh, you have okay, yeah. nice. It's uh, it's it's amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, just just really increases uh, absorption of whatever you put on top of it, and in this case, mask. Uh, I'll do. I'll follow up with usually if I I'm starting to shave a lot now. I didn't shave today, which is really ironic, but um, I uh, what it does is it it lifts up that the hair follicle, and then I'll just it just wipes hair off if you if you follow up and you shave. But either way, if you know if you don't shave. It just increases a lot of blood flow and circulation to the surface of the skin. And obviously you're getting that cell turnover and lightly exfoliates uh, the initial layer of dead skin. So I would recommend doing a, a mask at least once a week, uh, one to three times a week. And I've, I've been known to do it uh, a little bit more than that now. It's, it's definitely becoming a, a part of my day. It really is. I love it. Uh, I'm supposed to recommend one to three times a week, but it's starting to become four or five, sometimes six, if I have something to prepare for, which is usually every day now. So it's, uh, that's what I started off with. I'll use a pearl cleanser, my pearl cleanser, uh, which is really calming, soothing. And then I'll, uh, it's because if you're, you're gonna be very brightened after using a dermal roller and then obviously with the mask as well, which creates a lot of, you know, oxygenation of that, oxygenating of the blood flow to the surface. So uh, the, the calming, uh, capability of the pearl cleanser kind of soothes that area and then cleanses as well and I shave and then I'll follow with my moisturizer and go it sounds like I'm just doing like an infomercial for the my products but that's just what I do um, and then I'll follow with the gold serum night cream and go from there but yeah that's what I do that's what I do so what are some of your favorite meals meals yeah um yeah I used to be such a the leg of lamb the steaks, it's super affordable at Whole, Whole Foods too. It, I think it's like eight ninety nine a pound. So say if you eat a half half pound of that, you have dinner for four dollars and fifty cents, and that's like that's optimal too. Usually if you cut it right down through the leg, sorry any vegetarians or vegans out there, but you'll have a little uh, piece, a little chunk of the marrow too, 
And so you cook that grass-fed salted butter. Um, I'll, I'll, I cook in a cast iron pan. And so I'll do, I'll get the oven going at 420. And then, so I'll, I'll sear that little rosemary, garlic. I'll dice up some habanero, Himalayan salt. Uh, what am I missing? Black pepper. And then I'll sear it both sides. I don't, I used to cover it. I don't cover it anymore. Uh, three to four minutes. I like mine blue. Uh, so uh, my steaks, my meat blue. So that's like rare to, yeah, to a little bit more than rare. And then I'll uh, just pop it in the oven in for about a minute or two minutes to cook it evenly a little bit in the middle. God, it turns, it turns out so I'm, I'm getting, uh, yeah, they're, they're turning out really well. Rosemary though, that's the key. I used to do a little uh, German, organic German mustard from Whole Foods. That added a lot of flavor. I, for some reason, I haven't really uh, been doing any of that recently, but that's my go-to. And then on the side, I'll, I'll uh, steam up sweet potatoes, beets, broccoli. That's my combo right there. You're getting vitamin A from the sweet potatoes. You're getting a lot of good nitric oxide from the beets and vitamin C, zinc from the broccoli. Um, so that's like the dream team right there. Those are my favorite vegetables. I'm, I'm starting to get into a little bok choy, celery, Obviously, avocados are coming back in the season now, so I'll do a lot of uh, avocados as well. I'll do a little mash with beet kraut and um, any type of fermented vegetables. I'll mash that up with avocado, and it just adds, so I get like the tang from the, the kraut, the savory from uh, the meat and the steak. I'm cooking a lot of ribeyes as well, and then the the vegetables you can flavor those as much or however you want. I'll usually just put a little grass fed butter or um, hot sauce on them. It works for me. Or I'll blend it up with a little coconut milk and then add some sweet potato Thai soup to it and make like a, and now put that on top of the, the lamb and make like just a sauce, but it's like the most nutrient dense sauce ever. And it tastes amazing. So I wish I had the re recipe for that. I don't really do recipes. I just kind of just go with the flow and look at the spice cabinet and then I'll see what I have and start experimenting. But, um, if I can come up with a recipe, I'm sure I can. I'll, I'll mix it up and toss it in. Are you ready for the next mm -hmm. question? Okay. Um, what inspired you to make presents and just like the name and the scent? So what inspired those? Oh, those? yeah. That's a great question. Uh, well, I, I got lucky with the perfumists. I really did. Because I had a, a benchmark for a scent that I wanted. Um, that I wanted to, excuse me. That I, that I love. And so I got a little vial of that. I found, luckily my chemist for uh, my pearl cleanser also has an affiliation with, uh, has a really good recommendation for a perfumist. So I sent a vial into them. I cannot tell you how, I mean, you're going back and forth on, with cardamom, with Palo Santo, with cucumber essence, leather, tobacco, sandalwood, lang lang, cedar, a lot of things didn't work, and each revision is costly, because you're getting you're getting six revisions, six samples uh, for each revision. This started in September 2016, and each if, they're all good, but and then they got to they start you start to overanalyze it, and you go and it's, it's too sweet, it's too woodsy, it's too baby powdery. It's just. I knew what I wanted and I wasn't going to sign off on anything until I got it. But when you're going back and forth, it's hard to explain and revise through emails and you got to get, you're getting on phone calls and you're getting another six. We went through about, oh man, I signed off on it three times, but I declined the two. I reversed the two sign offs. Like that was done. And I mean, this is presence itself basically has its own story. I could write a book on that, what that was to formulate Serious, and then going back, and then and then once you finally decide on a pro or on what you got, then you have to uh, well, well, the the steps in between that, right? I knew I wanted this benchmark of a scent, and I knew I wanted it as clean as possible, meaning using organic ingredients when possible, and then getting down to the even down to the alcohol, grain, corn, and cane, sugar cane, grape. We had so many different alcohols to choose from and they do not smell the same. They, they bring out different notes of the fragrant oil blend than you, you would think. And so that changes it up. And so you think you have the, 
the fragrance that you want and then you tell them all right so now i want to make that organic and then they give you this the different versions and different variations of alcohol to choose from and then it's a whole nother set of revisions i'm so like that product itself is up there with the mask as far and well they all are they're all really tough but um i just knew what i wanted and it's, it's you can't explain it um as far as the, re the revision period they give you uh adjustments general adjustments and you have to write them out and send them back it's just it's a feel thing so it's hard to put into words but when you get it it takes a while and, and it it was very frustrating but uh then just to nail down that formula and then uh then you have to decide on the packaging the bottle and we went custom with that and every component from four different sources all around the world we finally got one that was able to spray paint the black and on our custom bottle and uh, get everything hot stamped. Anyway, I'm talking way too much on that product. But anyway, uh, it's I, I, yeah, it's I could go on and on and on about that because it was just nonstop. Yeah. There are probably yeah over 20 revisions, and, and and so each revision gets six. So imagine that 126 things to choose from, down to the decimal point of fragrant oil, and then you know it's just it's 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 extremely tough. It was not just something that we signed off on and. and people make their adjustments according to what they think like i knew i did, I did it purely on what what i thought that you guys would want and that the public would want and we got it so, so how did you come up with a name oh yeah so presence it's just always been a thing for me i mean it's we're in a world now where everybody wants to show and say uh so much rather than just being you know just 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 you know, that stands out more than anything. Actions, who you are stands out more than words. And peacocking has become, I don't want to talk negatively, but I'd rather speak positively on just what, what I'm attracted to and what stands out for me and what I'm drawn to. And that's purely presence. That's, that's, that's your aura. That's what you exude. And it's just the most attractive thing to me, to, uh, to a stranger, to just to uh, people that I idolize and look up to. It's their presence. You know, I watch, I watch their body language. I watch everything about them. And it's just, it's cool. People watching, people I don't know, it doesn't matter. I like to see just social interactions, but without even saying a word, you know? And just, uh, if that makes sense. I, yeah. Something I've always been analyzing. Just, you know, just to myself, I get a kick out of it. But I also think there's a strength in just uh, making a statement without words. You know, and that's our, that's our big slogan. That uh, yeah, I love that name, and I love what what it stands for. There's a big, you know, there's a big, you know, uh, symbol behind that, big meaning behind that. Yeah. So uh, that's something everybody can relate to. Great inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question from Ben Hildreth asking, when you had your blood test done, what were your uh -huh. cholesterol levels um, because of all the butters and red meat feed? Yeah, Ben Ben's asked up. Hey Ben. Um, we so the the thing to look for, and I, I don't really want to get into that because I'm not a doctor. I I would have to, um, have uh, you know the thing is with, with cholesterol, LDL, HDL, there are different levels. I would pay, what I was paying attention to in my blood because cholesterol is there's becoming more and more information on cholesterol actually being beneficial to us and to the as a building block in testosterone and growth hormone and all of uh, the above and it actually being, uh, it, it gets bad rap, egg yolks, butter. I mean, it, it's just, the, there are, these are things that, that are more is coming out on the benefits of cholesterol. I would look for the inflammation markers. I would look for where your, say if your uh, thyroid isn't functioning as well. If they say if like you have, uh, your pancreas isn't functioning as well. Think kidney, liver, um, they're, 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 your inflammation markers are, are what I would pay attention to in the blood work. Um, I, I, yeah, I have to look at that, but I, I, I'm just not a, not a fan of analyzing cholesterol personally. And um, I'll explain more on that uh, when I know more about it. I just, uh, yeah, I know, hopefully that, that explains that, but. Yeah, I, I pay more attention to inflammation markers and things like thyroid function and uh, cholesterol. Yeah, there, there's just more coming out on the benefits of it. Okay, Sam Richards says that comments are right in the middle of your face. If you want to speak, talk, you might want to go over to the next 
Uh, is that better? Who, who's that, Candace? Sam Richards. Oh, hey, Sam. And then she Hopefully that's better. a question about discipline. Discipline, so, yeah. Yeah, if you wake up feeling really tired and lacking energy, how do you get yourself amped up to work out even if your body wants to rest and relax? That's tough. It's getting harder. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Late nights, early mornings. I'm up every morning, five, six. Um... Internal motivation, you know, I put situations in my head that I've been in that uh, wake me up pretty quickly. With that said, there, uh, okay, I have this little foot compression board with these little prongs that stip, stick up right outside my bed. It's the first thing I have to step on. That'll wake you up immediately. I go from that to doing push-ups to failure. It used to be like 60 or 80. Sometimes it's like 20 these days. But whatever it is, it's getting the blood flow and you're sticking on this, this hypertension, you're standing on this foot hypertension board with like these little wood prongs that deal with the sensors. You have all these like sensors at the bottom of your feet that, so you have that going, it doesn't feel good. But what it does, it wakes you up. It's the first thing I step on when I get out of my bed. And I'm going from that right into my push-ups. and I don't care what type of funk you're in, you're, that'll, that'll, excuse me, that'll wake you up. And that's, that's what I do, but I don't, what I don't do is I have people that motivate me like, uh, uh Jocko Willink. These, I'm getting up at five or six. He's been up for two hours. I mean, the, things like that in my head, Kobe Bryant did an amazing interview recently where he was talking, he was explaining what separated him from other NBA athletes. And he was talking about guys getting up at nine, working out at 10 from 10 to noon, eating, maybe working out again from two to four eating. And then. Kobe was talking about what he did. He would get up at three, work out from four to six, eat, work out again from like seven to nine. By that time, he's already, and this is what he did consistently throughout his career. He didn't stop. He didn't like, that. he was obsessed and, and worked, you know, extremely hard. If you do the math on that and you're continuously doing that, you're going to, and you have the, the physical gifts as he does, you're going to separate yourself. He's one of the greatest of all time. And to hear that, uh, it makes sense. It makes sense now. I, I wouldn't compare myself. Well, I don't, know. I don't know. It's hard to quantify a work ethic, but to push yourself and to really realize there are people out there working harder than you. That's what struck me. That fear of being outworked is what separate or well made me uh, work extremely hard baseball, and that hasn't left to where I am right now. But I keep that same mentality, that that same athletic mentality of just being outworked. That there's somebody who's already been up doing uh, more than I am. And that kind of like gets this little hummingbird going inside me. Uh, and that's just, that's every day. That's every day. Even it's hard to slow down even when I'm on vacation, I guess. It, it's always on my mind. Like a, a minute doesn't go by where I'm just constantly thinking about what I can do to, whether it's with Alatera or myself, I'm always just uh, go, go, go. Yeah. Okay, what hair products do you use? Hair products? Yeah. Well, we have a, uh, little night cream in right now. Night I'm serious. <laughs> night cream. Uh, because I'm experimenting with the texture of that. The texture of the night cream is thick. And I really want it. I'm combining that with the, like some clays. I don't have the clays in now, but uh, like a blend of individual clays. I want to get this. Remember uh, American Crew Fiber and then the grooming cream? They also have pomade and... Um, another one but I want to get like this fine I want to clean that clean that product up basically I want to, I want to use I can't make my night cream because that'd be the most expensive <laughs> hair product ever but I want to get a base of that so maybe use something like acai butter cacao butter beeswax and like a blend of essential oils maybe like some rosemary in there too some Chinese herbs hoshu wu and then this clay that I found it works well with my hair color but I could probably find some some senna or not henna yeah, henna yeah. So it's a way to get to, to a point to get it, uh, the color down so it works for uh, darker hair as well. But it's in my head. The wheels are spinning. I'm experimenting with it daily. So it, it's good. I, I just, you know, like anything, it's, it's going to take some more time. I would say we, would have, we could have something uh, by Thanksgiving. Yeah, I really, it's been in my head. And I've been actively beta testing on myself and using stuff myself for a couple of years now, but I've been just using combinations, but that's how it all starts of, of raw ingredients and putting things together and mixing it with my finger and stuff like that and then applying it. But 
that's the beginning stages and I do that pretty much every day or any time that I use hair products. Okay, Sam has another question. So what do you think about intermediate fasting, short eating, eating windows, like two to four hours, um, <clears throat> needing 120 grams of protein? Is it best to spread that through throughout three meals or to keep it short with one or two meals? Sam, you do 120 a day? 100, that's a lot. Um, I guess it's, yeah. So I would do, personally, it's just, it's different. Um, I've heard separately that, that, um, women shouldn't intermittent fast. I've, I've also heard that it's okay. I mean, I'm not really sure if anybody out there has a, has an opinion on that, please uh, feel free to chime in. Oh, I can see the question right here. Um, I would, what, what I do is say if I eat at 8 PM, I'll eat around 12 or noon. I just ate right now and it's what five for the first time. Um, it just depends, but that's, I guess, intermittent. So I, I would, I would get at least uh, 16 out, well, 12 to 16 hours in, what, whatever you can do, but try to, I mean, I, I really think, you know, staying mineralized is important. So if you can do that through water, Himalayan salt, bone broth is great. Um, staying, you know, maybe some lemon water, but getting good minerals in there from Himalayan salt, sea salt, good natural minerals. Uh, Gerald Steiner's amazing. Such a fan of this. I, Oh, hey, Sam corrected herself. Uh, she said 100 grams. That's hiking. Okay. Now, that's okay. 100 grams is still... That's a good amount. Hey, that's a good amount. I, I What do I do? I probably do around that, too. A day. Uh, yeah, say so if I have a you know, half pound, 25, 25, so that's 50. And then I'll do a little bit lighter. Yeah, I'm like around 100 myself. It's one of those things. That you, you hear... I just feel good. I go on like how I feel and how I feel the next morning. If, uh, if if my muscles are reacting to a, to a workout or whatever, if I have energy, I think amino acid content is, is extremely important as well. Branch chain aminos, arginine, uh, glutamine, agnotine sulfate, lysine, leucine, um, uh, tyrosine at night, proline, glycine at night. Um, I'm missing a game changer. Taurine during the day, beta alanine before a workout, Horse chestnut, thank you Dave Asprey for that one. That's a big one, horse chestnut. Organic horse, horse chestnut powders. I've seen some some pretty, uh, some just an increase in vascularity and also just uh, workouts, uh, stamina wise. I, I'm able to, to go uh, longer without resting. So I wanna answer her question. I don't think I did. Uh, I hope I did. I am doing Lyle McDonald's protocol with one gram LBM. Okay. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I've, I've heard of that. I've heard, uh, I've also heard half of that per, per body mass, but um, yeah, that's tough to get to really, if you're only doing a couple meals a day to get 100, 100 120 grams of protein, um, that's, that's aggressive on the system. Uh, I would split it up into three meals, three or four meals, if I were you. But how do you feel? How are you walking around? Is your, is your, Belly button close to your spine. That's how I gauge things. Like if you're nice and light on your feet and you're moving around quickly and swiftly and uh, you feel like your digestion's on point, you're not burping and all of that. Uh, I just, I just, it's a feel thing for me. It's not the best explanation, <laughs> but uh, how do you feel? How do you feel? Same mineral water I use per your recommendation. Hey Brian, what's going on? And I'll tell you why I use this. It's because of the bicarbonate content. I don't know if you can see that, but it's 1,800 milligrams per liter. And 2,500 dissolved, 2,500 uh, dissolved mineral, that's mineral content in this little 25 ounce bottle. We have calcium, magnesium, sodium, chloride, potassium, and sulfate. I mean, that's... This is all natural too. It's not like adding a you know mineral capsule, which I also supplement with as well. Post uh, sauna session, uh, I'll, I'll I'll use a, a full spectrum mineral capsule. Dump that in. Uh, I won't put it in this. I'll put it in just normal tap water with some Himalayan salt just to stay mineralized. Because as we age, we're depleted in those vital vital minerals. But also as you as you sweat and if you work out. Or if you just left the sauna, you're sweating out all you know, to good to or well, harmful toxins and impurities, but you're also sweating out your good minerals as well. So you want to stay satiated with uh, Himalayan salt and 
uh, full spectrum mineral capsule as well. From now nutrition, they're like nineteen ninety nine on Amazon for two hundred of them. You do a couple of those a day. Yeah, it lasts you for a while. How often do you use the sauna? Oh man, sauna. Every time I go to the gym, which is three to four times a week, and ten to fifteen minutes. Okay. Ten to fifteen minutes, and then. Yeah, yeah. You'll see. I have a whole protocol for that. I want to do. I should just do a whole live on my sauna thing. It's yeah. just. It's. It's unbelievable. I'll do it at the end of a workout, just to just to sweat out all the, you know sweat out impurities, but also get that lactic acid going. And I feel like it helps reduce inflammation. Uh, I just heard Dr. Rhonda Patrick talk about uh, how healthy it is for cardiovascular uh, function and heart health, and so. That's another big, I, I mean, more and more is coming out on, on sauna benefits. Do you so, think it's better to do like 15 minutes rather than like an hour or something? I hear people doing that. Um, I just, <laughs> I'm looking down at my hands because I, I remember when I used to do 45 minutes to an hour and I'd see my hands prune up and I couldn't like squeeze out. What I do is I squeeze out the sweat yeah. like, and then it replaces itself. And then you squeeze that out again every like 30, 45 seconds. It just, it's, it's unbelievable in there. It was actually kind of embarrassing sometimes when you're, well, I'm not embarrassed, but it's just like, it's like a faucet just, and then you got just like, it's like changing the oil. That's what I call it. Just fresh, fresh, good new water in and, uh, you're sweating out, you know, getting rid of the impurities that we absorb through the environment and through whatever we, uh, take in throughout, you know, the weekend or, yeah. We have a couple more questions. So what supplements do you take at night, Sam is asking? Okay. Uh, at night, I, I take MagTech from Natural Stacks. It's magnesium 308, which is really good to calm the system and just uh, just really it just puts me in this like relaxed state where I'm really to get, or I, I get really good sleep from that, wake up refreshed, and... Um, has a lot of good benefits too. Magnesium 308. I use uh, Natural Stacks MagTech, M-A-G-T-E-C-H. Great, great company. They actually use this open source, poly, or open source uh, uh, transparent label. So they, they tell you exactly how many milligrams they put of every ingredient, which is unheard of. Props to them. And then I do glycine, proline, glutamine, uh, Jarosil Silitec or Jarosil Silica extract or well drops, and that's really good for bone density, uh, hair, skin, nails as well, and it's highly absorbable. It's it's uh, it's a little bitter, but you just put it in there with a little salt. Doesn't taste like much. Excuse me. And then what else? Shizandra Hoshu Wu from Jing Herbs, and then I'll do this Restore the Jing by Jing Herbs as well. God, I love. I'm, we should tag him in this. I, Really trust uh, George over at uh, at Jing Herbs. He, he has incredible milling of his herbs, so they're like it's like silk. Um, I use his pearl powder and ginseng powder in, in my clay mask. I just yeah can't go with anybody else. But yeah, he has really good herbs. Jing Herbs, J I N G H E R B S. And what else? What else do I do? I do another big one before I go to bed. Did I already say Shizandra? I don't think I did. Shizandra for did. sure. I did. Yeah, right, yeah of course. I did. <laughs> Um, turmeric, turmeric. I, I also I do the powder, shave grass, which is horsetail extract, which is really good for hair, and uh, it's a very uh, potent source of silica. Um, let's see, and then a little black pepper for absorption. I feel like I'm missing one. Oh, uh, spirulina as well. Spirulina, unbelievable. I mean, if you're going to take one thing, if if depending on budget, some people, you know. Uh, that would be that would be the the one to take spirulina, S P I R U L I N A spirulina organic spirulina Nutrix N U T R E X Nutrix spirulina, get the big five pound um, bag of it from Amazon. It's like one hundred fifty dollars, but it'll last you for a year, and maybe even longer. Well, that yeah, you don't want to last much much longer than that. But I do a tablespoon a day. It's unbelievable. Vitamin A C K B twelve sodium alginate. Blue green al uh, stem uh, blue green algae um, uh, stimulates like the ATP production. I mean, it's it's in yeah that is my go to right there. Spirulina, yeah, okay. one of my go tos, one of my several go tos. 
Um, Dan Sullivan is asking, any tips for police as on a supplement? Hey, Dan. Um, yes. Niacin. If you don't mind the redness, which, I, I mean, it he could be a little embarrassing. Like What's that? He actually said, like, any, um, any tips for priests on a um, supplement like niacin. Okay, yeah. So, uh, ascorbic acid, ascorbic acid, uh, MSM, organic MSM. Uh, they're probably going to come in little crystals, so just put it in water, let it dissolve, maybe move it around a little bit, throw it in a blender, and then add some ascorbic acid in there. Uh, agmatine sulfate for uh, vasodilation to really get a lot of like blood flow going. Now, if you're post-workout, that'll be perfect anyway because you're going to be just ready to go. But if you're only going there specifically for the sauna, yeah, this uh, the bicarbonate in here, uh, more and more is coming out on like detox protocols with baking soda. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, and there's this is a natural form of bicarbonate. I prefer this, but I, every now and then I'll do... Uh, baking soda on its own. I, uh, someone close to me uh, can't, um, found out they had cancer recently, and so we were working on um, just ways to, to uh, get get get. Just I I did a, a talk recently, and I found out so much on like mitigating tumors through flaxseed, ground flaxseed, turmeric, black pepper extract, ginger. Um, what was another big one? Um, but yeah, but the baking soda was, was a baking soda was another big, big cleansing agent, detox agent, and that protocol for um, for as a cancer treatment. So uh, yeah, just all these things. You know, I think they should be consumed daily. Uh, but yeah, let's see, I feel like I'm missing one. Some people take charcoal. I don't really like taking charcoal though because I feel like it, it it eats up some of that. You know, like it would pull out. I feel like charcoal just bonds with everything that's around. So if you're taking in a lot of good nutrients, I feel like it pulls that away. Yeah. I feel like it kind of pulls and, 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 it, and attaches to everything, just cleanses the system altogether, but also takes a lot of the good stuff too. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, Sam is asking your workout of the, uh, uh, yeah, is your workout of the day early morning? How long is it? How much cardio? How much resistance? Um, it's so I used to be a. I still am technically. It's just a matter of when I can uh, have time to do it. It's usually seven p.m. I'll work out, but I feel so good when I work out in the morning. My whole day I'm on fire. So I mean, it's I've always been a late night uh, or midday, mid afternoon workout uh, fan of working out at those times, but it. I mean, the, the few times I had a friend come in from Florida, we were working out early in the morning, and I should know this considering my athletic background, we would have 6 a.m. weights, and I just felt amazing throughout the day. I just, it would disrupt my intermittent fast, but I don't really mind that as far as like, as soon as I get home, you want to eat and replenish. Uh, but man, you can't put like a, you know, a price on like how good you feel throughout the day, naturally. And that's actually what I was touching on in this in this Facebook Live is or I wanted to, is I've tried so many different nootropics and uh, obviously a lot of coffee. I, I've never felt better than than after a good workout. So I, I just working out in the morning. I just have my morning routines of doing my tonic, hanging upside down with a mask and coffee, and I'm good to go that way. But I would say I'm I'm starting to lean towards working out in the morning. And so that disrupts my whole, you know, intermittent fast. But I, 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 maybe I'll just go that route. It's tough. It's a really tough call. But anyway, so it's back, back to the workout. I, I do. I'll warm up. I'll do an incline, right? So on two level two, I'll go with three point two on the treadmill, or I'll do a bike for low impact cardio, and really just kill it, like just as fast as I can, and then slow a little bit, and as fast as I can till failure for as, uh, as, as long as I can on the bike. And say, so that's the bike, right? It's a really, like, that's a really good way to engage the core, but also get the, the, the chest, arms, all that loose. And then, you know, you're really getting some good cardio, uh, cardiovascular workout as well, getting that, that, uh, that heart, heart rate up. But then, so that's the bike. But if I go on the treadmill, I'll do, I'll start off at incline 3.2, walk a little bit, and then go right into as fast as the treadmill will go, uh, depending on whatever, 12, 14 levels 
uh, sprints basically. And then I'll go back down to 3.2 and I'll do a minute, minute, minute off, minute on, minute off, minute off, um, on for 10 minutes, sometimes 20, it just depends on what music's playing and <laughs> how fired up I am to, uh, to, car to do cardio or if I wanna just hop off and get going with the workout. But yeah. That's what I'll do, and then I'll, and then depending if I do back and by, uh, chest and try, shoulders, forearms, I will, it, just whatever day I'm doing. Uh, I'll, the main thing is I just I go I superset everything, I go right into the next workout, and that's why my workouts are so quick because I don't rest. I mean, if I do, I mean I, I do rest every now and then, but I try not to. I think that's the one big thing is just keeping that heart rate up. And really staying in that zone where your heart heart rate is consistent, and then consistently staying at that like high level and, and kind of shaking the system a little bit. I've heard that it just you continue to burn calories for the next thirty six hours, um, staying in that zone. So you see, you see uh, like the, with the long rest and, and getting your heart rate down. I don't like to do that. I just go, I bang it out. I keep my rest really quick, quick. Uh, when I do and I go on to the next one say if I do military press or whatever I'll go right into dumbbell curls and then right into dips and then right into lat pull downs and then right into rows push ups and then I'll just keep that going and then um, maybe rest a little bit and then um, by the next, by the time you know it you've already done three or four sets of those and then it's workout's done you don't want to overdo it definitely don't want to overdo it it could be counterproductive to you know building muscle and then uh, can start to become a little, uh, you know, uh, inflammatory as well for the system. And then I'll hop in the sauna and then call it a day. And then eat almost immediately after if you can. It's important to replenish. Okay, Tim True is asking which one do you like for horse though? Hey, Tammy. Star West, Star West Botanicals? Star West Organics. I have it in there. I should go grab it. Uh, Star West, S T A Star West, all one word, and I think it's botanicals. Star West botanicals, and it's uh, shade grass, shade grass, shade grass is horsetail. Very interesting. Thank you. You bet. Yeah, anytime. Let's see, charcoal picks up the good stuff too. Yeah, I thought that because it, it just expands, and if it's taking out, it's not like it just pinpoints the toxins. It's got to just seep up everything like a sponge, right? So I don't like taking that when I'm taking my tonics or, or my other supplements. So, yeah. Sam, that's a great question. Do I have any experience with molecular hydrogen water? I do. A good buddy of mine uh, from Trusi, T-R-U-S-I-I, -I, uh, swears by it. And there's, there's science behind that. I just don't know enough about it. I know how I felt afterwards. Felt great. But there's more and more coming out on, on molecular hydrogen water that's fascinating. A lot of people are coming on board with it. I just, uh, I don't know enough about it. Um, if what they say is true, it could be like a, a very, very fascinating uh, movement, which is great. Yeah. Um, so what was the hardest thing when you started Atatura? The hardest thing? Delegating. Delegating for sure, because you're passing on things that it's your baby, you know, and like, seen every part of the business, customer service, drop shipping, um, down to production, packaging orders. I mean, when you, every single one is so important and you pass it off uh, to someone, they may, there may be certain lapses and you may forget certain things on custom slips and that just never, rarely happen when, when it's, you know, when it's your own. And so you're passing off to someone. So that's, that's on me though, to, tr to train and really pinpoint certain things and, and, um, and because you know there are people out there that can do it just as good as me so i mean and so that's the most important thing is when you delegate make sure you do a, a thorough training on exactly how to do things so yeah that's that was uh the hardest thing uh in the beginning what about was, now now mm -hmm. um uh, <laughs> letting go letting go you know calming down and you know there's no, there's no me time, you know, and I don't want there to be, if that makes sense. It's hard. I'm weird, but I'm, when you love what you do, so I remember Alan Joe Ban was talking about it. Uh, he's a UFC fighter and a buddy of mine. 
when it's when it's like when it's your profession, but it's also a hobby. There's no there's no like there's no downtime. I don't want downtime. You know, it's uh, always on my mind. So if I have like a family, maybe in the future, I don't know. It's gonna be tough. <laughs> but I love what I do. So I would say that's it's tough because it's it's always on your mind. You know, you, social situations. You know, you're thinking about. You know, your the business is always on my mind. So it's tough to separate from that. You see people, you know, you're checking your phone. It's not like I'm checking text messages. I'm checking emails, you know. I'm checking Amazon stats. I'm checking website stats. I'm checking traffic, customer service inquiries. It's not like checking text messages and being rude. It's just, I guess technically it is kind of being, you know, you're checking the phone. It's hard for me to like just let go and isolate. I'm working on it. I'm seeing a hypnotist. I have an appointment Thursday at 2 p.m. And we'll see how that goes. So what do you do to de-stress? De uh, my Where workouts, yeah. my, my, my workouts are my time to just listen to music. Sauna is incredibly therapeutic for me. It's just a release. I can't tell you how many times I've just jogged in my car and, you know, written something down. Just ideas. That's where I get a lot of my ideas. Um, but then it's all work related. So it's, I don't know if that's letting go, but I love doing it. So I would say working out. That's a time where I'm not thinking at all about uh, business. I just music, pure music, uh, reflecting on my life and stuff. So, yeah. So Jill Sperling says, hello, Randy. Sorry, I'm late, by the way. Hey, Jill. Oh, no. This thing will be up here. Um, it'll be up here for, for uh, yeah. It, it just posts on the wall. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, um, what are the key things that keep you going in both like professional and personal lives? So I guess like, yeah, what keeps you going? What keeps me going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I um, I have big goals, big yeah. big goals, and and you have to chip away at those daily. So, and you have one person to look at at the end of the day, and that's myself. So, you got to be accountable. Big on being, you know, big on accountability and, and stri you know, striving towards knocking those goals down. Uh, and I like the progress that we that we're making towards that. There's always something else, and so that's the beautiful part. Is it's always what's next. It's kind of a gift and a gift and a curse. So, you know, but um, yeah, that's what keeps me going. I really deeply think that we have something special here, and I I, I need to get it in everyone's hands, or at least. In everybody's eyes, and just just explain what uh, you know. There's a lot. There's a lot that goes into this whole brand and um, and what we do. So. What does Alex Pro look like in like three, five years, three to five years? <sighs> That's. Um, it's tough. Pe people, ask, yeah, I've been asked that a lot. Is there anything? Yeah, I. You can project and plan and. I have the goals and things like that that I set aside for myself and I I just you know I'm gonna keep that to myself but um, I really I want to be I want to be just just maintain through trust and through you know ingredients and through products and the care that we ha we have for our customers and I think that's really gonna be just hopefully uh, uh, just put us that will separate us from other brands. But you know what? I, at the same time, there are brands that I, it, Green Beauty is becoming a, an amazing thing. I went over to Cat Beauty recently and just looking at ingredient decks of kick-ass brands that are very similar to ours. And so there's enough to go around. I mean, I, that's why I said like standalone brand. If, if that happens, great. But there's enough to go around. There is just as long as the whole mission of Green Beauty and holistic, natural skincare and, what you, and the whole mission and emphasis of what you put on top of your body is going to be absorbed into your bloodstream and just really just explaining that and just educating it with the intention of, of helping others you know feel better about themselves and and you know that's and just from a health perspective that's that's all i need you know we have a, a platform we have the ability to create our own products but just with that whole mission of just explaining and hopefully educating with with helping others just choose this not that whether it's my product whether it's someone else's that's fine too but just staying away from toxic products and spreading the word you know that's that's, that's what we want to continue to do are there any um green beauty brands that you really look up to or do you just 
Audacity. Yeah, uh, Audacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, O D A C I T E, a former a cancer survivor. She's man, unbelievable. She's got a unbelievable story of how she healed herself with all that. She she uh, she got cancer, and then she changed her diet. She changed her skincare products. Changed everything, and in doing so. She became obsessed with ingredients. I mean, very so not someone my story at all. I, mean, she, I can't imagine what she went through, but um, that that's how she built her brand. And she's over there in Topanga Canyon. She's got she's got seriously a very comparable mask to mine. The first mask I've ever tried. That is, it's 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 close. It's close. But anyway, her line is unbelievable. I mean, her sourcing. She's yeah, her products are unbelievable. I'll I'll give respect respect where respect is due. They have a great, great line of products. Yeah. Her wild carrot serum literally smells like you just took a bite out of a carrot. <laughs> and she can pinpoint down to the, to the region in the world, like where it's sourced, the temperature of the cold press and that, yeah. or the extraction process of how they did, how they extracted the, the vitamin A. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there, that's the thing. There's a, there's, that's when I first started this, there weren't too many really good brands. That's yeah. why I started it. Yeah. Um, and I, I searched, you know, high and low for uh, a combination of ingredients, like as far as like just stars, actives, it's full of that. And I'm like, why does everybody dilute? Why do they dilute and fill? And so I just, that's how I started making my own. But now there's a change because people are realizing you can, there's a market for it out there. People will, you know, buy the best, you know, because you only live once. Why not treat yourself? Yeah, Jill, I agree. She's awesome. She's awesome. So if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to... As, as Sam said that, um, I guess the video went down when um, when you're answering about the cardio and the resistance, mm -hmm. I guess. Oh, really? Uh, let's see. My end went down when he was answering about how much time of cardio and resistance. Uh see car okay yeah so cardio if you're doing let's see 10 to 15 minutes but switch it up I like to just shake the system a little bit and kind of keep it um, like a high intensity interval training so say if you're if you're if you're on the, the um, stair mat or not stair master but the treadmill I like to have a little incline to take away a little pressure on the knees so I'll put it up to two on the incline and say if you walk from 3.2 and then like the level on the um, on the treadmill and then kick it up to as far as fast as you can go. So go from walking straight into sprints and then tone it back down to 3.2. Do minute on, minute off, minute on, minute off. And then uh, I do that from 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes 20. It's just up to you, whatever you're feeling. But that usually gets a sweat going, just shaking the system a little bit um, in intervals. And then if your bike is just hopping on the little bike and getting, uh, just really kicking that system up. You're not, you just, it's very low impact, but you're also really kicking up your, uh, your heart rate as well and getting, um, getting good blood flow circulation going from head to toe. You're also getting a good stretch from, on your arms, chest, you know, ab. I really feel a lot of ab work engagement on the, on the bike as well if you just isolate it and position yourself uh, in a certain way. So, yeah, that, that's another good one and then um uh, resistance training I'll, I'll whatever day i'm on chest chest or tri back or by shoulders and forearms i'll separate it into those three categories uh and whatever day i'm on i'll just go um from station to station to station i, su I superset everything uh and then uh I, I try not to rest but sometimes obviously you have to but i keep it uh, minimal and then i'm in and out you know under 30 minutes Three to four times a week, you're good. That's all you need. Just, just uh, wouldn't overwork yourself. Sorry if I'm asking something you already explained. No, it's fine. No problem at all. And her question is the way. Uh, please explain molecular hydrogen water, and use this type of water, pluses and minuses. Hey, uh, as I as I said before, I just don't know enough about it uh, to have a comment. I, I a good buddy of mine. Maybe I'll CC him on this. He owns. Trusi, T R U S I I. They're uh, that's what they 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 sell a a machine, but also a little tablet that you can drop in the water, and I, I felt great on it. 
I just haven't experimented with it enough. I've heard so many things about uh, molecular hydrogen and this big movement that everybody's, uh, that a lot of people are talking about, a lot of very knowledgeable people are talking about, and I just, I don't know enough about it, I'm sorry. Uh, but if I had, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll start experimenting with that because yeah, a lot is coming out on it. All right. Well, hey, I'll be around. Uh, I got to finish my steak. Still, it's funny. I'm starving again. But yeah, I hope you guys got something out of this. And I appreciate you guys for stopping by and asking the questions. And yeah, and if you have any, listen below. And I'll just eat up and hop back on the computer. All right, guys. See you.